Right guys, installment number three of the Squat Mechanic series. Um, I hope it's not too obvious, but I got quite sun-kissed yesterday, i.e. sunburned, fell asleep in the sun, no cream man. Forgot I wasn't invincible, but yeah, a little bit burned today, so don't laugh at me. But we're going to go through part three of the Squat Mechanic series. This is going to be a quick one, but it's one that I want you to, I guess, open up your eyes to, because um, it has important implications for basically everything else we're going to talk about but also for your understanding of not only squats but things like conventional deadlifts versus sumo deadlifts like narrow stance leg press versus wide stance leg press basically what we're doing in this video is introducing the concept of the squat as a 3D system okay because we always look at these 2D illustrations which are a total oversimplification of what's actually going on because if we just look at the side on view of a squat like the top the top view here we don't really get a full understanding of what the person's proportions are you know in terms of a snapshot but we also don't get a good understanding of what challenge that person is actually under you know because when we start to view it as a 3d system it becomes a totally different discussion and that's what we're going to be doing here so it is going to be a quicker video but i hope it's going to answer a lot of questions for you guys um because it is an important one so so what I've got here is the side view that we've been working with along with a front view, okay? So we're just kind of adding that extra layer of complexity that's going to really help with your understanding. So we're taking the example of someone with proportionally long femurs from the last video and we're going to, you know, answer the question, you know, is it their destiny to have to squat with this leaned over pattern? And in the last video we talked a little bit about how you could elevate the heels and that would change how the person's squat looks. So if you have long femurs and you elevate the heels, you're no, you're no longer limited by your ankle dorsiflexion and you can work through an additional range of motion essentially. And that's not the only way of achieving this. So what we've got is our person with long femurs here with their typical kind of leaned over squat, limited in the depth they can achieve as a result of that. But what we're looking at then is the front view. How is that person squatting from the front? So if you are like this person and your legs are right in front of you when you're doing a squat you're letting your knees travel forward your feet are pointing forward and you've got those longer femurs then it's going to be a, a, a it's going to be a far greater chance of that being a limiting factor okay so that is reflective of that sort of front profile so that's what we're assuming in that case but if we look to the second example you might look at that, if we were looking at that as just, just a 2D squat and, and, no, and we weren't looking at another angle, you might assume, oh, that person has ridiculously short femurs, you know, and they're perfectly built to squat. But if I show you this pen, okay, this, this marker, and you look at the length of it from that position versus that position, okay? If you were to look at that and not understand that I had turned it, then you would see, I'm, I'm a disgrace, but what, what you would see is that that length is that versus that, okay? So the marker looks much longer, appears much longer here versus when we turn it to the side, okay? And that is exactly what we are looking at in the case of the squat as well, okay? So when, when someone rotates their hips outwards so for example in, in a typical sumo deadlift stance so they put their they rotate they rotate their hips externally and into more abduction pointing the feet outwards taking that wide kind of sumo stance style that's what they look like from the front but they can still look like that from the side so it's not always obvious from a side profile especially when we're working with these stick man kind of illustrations it's not always obvious what degree of external rotation and abduction someone has at the hip joint. So you don't get a true picture of what the demands on the system actually are because all you're seeing is this kind of 2D profile which would lead you to believe that, oh, you know, a person has very short femurs, they're perfectly built a squat, when in fact what they're doing is taking advantage of the fact that the squat is, an act is actually a 3D system, okay? So it is a case of, of, of taking that understanding of what we talked about in the last video and then realizing how we can actually apply it and manipulate it because this is one of those examples because what this person here is doing is saying all right i've got long femurs now what can i do about that okay if i push my knees out more externally rotate and abduct my hips a little bit more 
what I can then do is not have to push myself beyond my push my center of mass beyond my base of support I'm essentially staying within that by using those three dimensions that we have available so by pushing the knees out what the person does is hit their end range of motion at the ankle joint much later but the thing is they're using up more of the range that the hip actually has available okay so they're not just flexing they're also abducting and externally rotating and what you'll find is that the limiting factor to range of motion in a squat like this just like a sumo deadlift is more likely to be for example if you very tight if you very tight adductors okay if you you don't have great muscle length in the adductors and um, you're quite tight around the groin the groin region in terms of the actual hip joint it, its actual structure you might have t a tight capsule you might have tight um, ligaments inside there and um, you might have very poor strength and ability to recruit the external rotators of the hip joint so all of these things come into play so you've got kind of the actual muscular components you've got the the ligamentous and capsular components and you can have a strength component in terms of not being able to externally rotate your hips sufficiently in their kind of shortened range so it does bring in more challenges and and what we also have to realize here is that that person if they if they're not if they don't have the range available to get into that external rotation and abduction at the hip joint what they might be susceptible to is the knees falling in falling into pronation at the foot so what you'll see is something along the lines of the knee coming in like that and maybe the foot going like that so they're kind of collapsing inwards in their squat because again it is another way of looking at the range of motion that we actually have available because it is a 3D system so if you were to only look at, it, look at it in terms of a 2D system you're not also taking into account the rotational demands on the hip joint and the, the adduction forces that are there that are increasing the wider, the wider you actually put your legs so it is a case of viewing the exercise with a little bit of extra layer of complexity because understanding this is actually quite empowering because if, if you are that person and that when you try to do the perfect you know feet forward knees forward squat if you find that you can't get down very deep then taking a slightly wider stance pushing the knees out and being able to uh, being able to use up that range of motion at the hip joint that's actually going to be able that's going to allow you essentially to attain a deeper squat attain more knee flexion in your squat and overall get a greater challenge from your squat since you're not limited solely by your bodily proportions so hopefully that is helpful because that's going to help you understand as well you know certain things that you feel during your leg press it's going to help you understand why people can stay more upright in a sumo deadlift because again you're taking advantage of the fact that whether or not you can stay upright and the whole center of mass basis of support, basis of support relationship that is largely dictated by the 2d analysis so by looking at it in terms of a 2d analysis up here that's really what dictates that sort of stuff, okay? But overall, we've still got the 3D variables at play, okay? So that's why you want to make your squat look like that, pretty much, like, like most people, I'm, I'm going to say, will want to have a more upright squat. So now you've got the tools of elevating your heels and you've got the tool of taking a slightly wider stance pushing the knees out a bit more, using a little bit more external rotation and abduction and then you can begin to manipulate your squat a little bit more without just saying, oh my body proportions make me not able to squat so I'm not going to squat because obviously that's not the answer for everyone. So hopefully that was helpful guys. If you have any questions of course do ask and we will be continuing to build on this. I've got at least five more videos planned in the squat mechanics series because I think like the reason I want to use the squat is because it's quite a complex lift and it helps you understand a lot of different concepts and then if, when we discuss other exercises it's going to be much easier um, but the squat is something that most people do and by going through it in so much detail it's going to give you an appreciation of some of the things you need to be thinking about and you're probably already thinking about how a lot of this stuff does apply to other exercises so I'll catch you guys in the next video um, enjoy the sun don't get burned like me and have a great week